Hi everyone, I'm Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. This week, I'm so happy to be able to show you a brand new style. This is Harper by Rene of Paris from the Alexander Couture collection and the color is Auburn Sugar R. So this style just came out and I cannot wait to show her to you. But before we start, I wanted to ask if you haven't done so already, please subscribe below, like and comment and we'll get started. Okay, so we'll take a close look at some of the features um, and then we'll look at the cap construction. As always, I'll show you some styling options and we'll take her outside. So first, I want to show you the features. Obviously, this is a gorgeous, sleek, long style. Um, there are some layers, subtle, but a few, and the, it just makes for beautiful movement. Um, and a very nice density, not at all too thick, perfect for summer. And um, yeah, let me go ahead and show you the lace front. Now she's a center part, and I have not done anything to this wig other than put it on and um, just loosen up the part a little, but she's a center part. Now here is the lace front, which I always like to show you. I will say that these, this is a fairly dark root on this color. You can get a close up there. There are some knots um, that are visible. So depending on how you wear this style, I would absolutely want to work on these knots a little bit to obscure them and possibly um, thin out that hairline a little, pluck some of those knots um, to get a little bit more of a gradual transition um, in the front there. And I think we'll do that together. So, um, but yeah, that is that. And it, we do have a mono part, which right now is not very visible because uh, I haven't put any um, silicone tape underneath or done anything to make that natural scalp appearance um, obvious. So, but I wanted to show her to you right out of the box before we do any work on her. So here we go. I'll show her to you from the right and the back and the left. Just beautiful. She is wanting to fall in my face a little bit. Um, and so I think what we'll do together is change the part to be a little bit more on the side, which this is just how I would do that. Because of the center part, you can't do the whole part on the side or you won't be able to create a scalp appearance, but we're going to just in towards the front hairline, part it a little bit. I'm already liking that and we'll steam that in place. So that's an initial look at this. Let me go ahead. I will grab the tools that I need and um, we'll do some work so that uh, she's styled the way I like her and then we will continue with the review. So I have a little clip, clip this back and we will want to steam that in place. First, I want to steam the part in place and then I want to steam these fibers away from the face a little bit. So I have here my eye steam steamer. That's what we'll be working with. And let me take her off. So the first thing I want to do is to add a piece of um, silicone tape and I've shown this in the past, but it is the AWD medical silicone tape that I like to use. It comes in a roll and I've pre-cut a piece here. So I'll simply remove the backing from that tape and apply it to the part line. And I like to do that at this point so that I can uh, see if I'm liking the way that part will look um, when we've steamed it back. So let me go ahead and apply that. It's very easy to do and to remove again when you want to. So there we go. Show you what that looks like. Just applied that inside there. And so now you can already see that you've got some natural scalp appearance going on there. Okay, so let's put her on a blockhead. I have it here. And We'll go ahead and steam these fibers back. So first, 
I want to steam the part in place. So I'll turn on my steamer. And we'll just go over that part a few times and I'll try to avoid the lace in the front. And then the key to setting this will be to leave it in place until it's cool. It can still be damp, but it should be cool when you uh, take the clips out and work with it. So now the part has been steamed in place. Now, with this one, I actually think what I want to do is steam back both sides, not just one side. I'm just going to loosely gather these fibers and clip that in place there. And we'll go ahead and steam that side. Keeping my fingers out of the way and trying not to get too close to the lace. All right, now on the other side, I want to at least do two sections, not just the front. I like to do that so that the weight of the fibers uh, doesn't push that, that front layer forward when you're trying to um, have this styled back a little bit. So let's create a section. I have a rat tail comb here. And we'll leave this front portion as our second section. And I just put it, clip it up here. And then you can loosen the fibers a little if you wanna give it just a little lift there. And we'll steam that. And really get into those fibers. You can always do more, but you wanna make sure that you don't have any kind of a strange shape when you're doing this because it's really setting this style now to be swept away from the face. And now that needs to cool, but you can keep going. What I like to do is I take the layer in front then, and I, I have a whole video about steaming your wig and styling it with steam, which I'll include in the description box. So I take that front section and I'm going to clip it behind the other one so that I'm not creating any kind of an indent in that area. There we go. And we can loosen that a little again if we want to have a little lift there. And we'll do the front section. I really prefer this method to using too much product because you, the product you have to wash out. Some products can be difficult to wash out of wigs and uh, then it's permanent and this can easily be changed um, and, uh, can, uh, and doesn't harm the fibers whatsoever. So I feel like this is a very effective method for changing the style just a little bit. Okay, so we'll need to let this cool and uh, then we'll look at it together and see what, if any, plucking we wanna do at the hairline. Okay, she's back on my head. So let's see what we accomplished with the steaming. Remove the clips. And you can see how that is falling in my face far less. Creates a pretty little bend here. And we have our two clips on the right side. You can always do more steaming. Um, you could create more sections whatever you feel is necessary to achieve the style you're looking for. This color is just gorgeous. I love this dark auburn color. Okay. Absolutely. That is what I was hoping for. You can see falls forward much less can absolutely work with this now and you can see we've created a bit of a side part. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of powder to that part. We have the silicone tape underneath so that powder will adhere really nicely to that silicone tape. And if it's too severe you can always shake it out and apply a new piece of silicone. Sometimes with these dark roots when you apply that light powder it can look a little extreme. It's a little hard to see here, but hopefully I'm 
finding the part line. And I'm just using a matte eyeshadow for this. And I'm using a brush for painting because it's nice and stiff and it allows me to really get into those fibers, get down to the cap. Okay, so that creates a natural scalp appearance and helps obscure knots a little bit. Let's pat that a little bit. We'll see afterwards if I want to possibly change out the silicone tape if that's looking a little severe, but looks looks pretty good right now. Okay, and then the last bit of customizing that I want to do is I do want to work on this hairline just a little bit. And this is tricky, I've done it before, and I'm hoping that I can show you how I do this in the camera. Um, it's a little hard to see, but I'll do my best. And um, I don't wanna to do too much because once you over pluck, you can't go back. It's just like trimming a wig, it doesn't grow back. So you wanna be very careful whenever you're plucking a front hairline and do a little bit of a, at a time so as to avoid over plucking. Okay, so I just want to lighten up the front, the very front a little bit. And now I have a set of tweezers here. This is the tweezer man. I don't even remember where I got this, probably at a drugstore. Um, and it has very pointed, a very pointed tip at the end there, you see? So you can really grab those teeny tiny little knots. Now when you're doing this, of course, the most important thing is to be certain that you're not grabbing onto the lace um, because the last thing you wanna do is uh, rip a hole in your lace. So please be careful when you're doing this. And if you don't need to do it, don't do it. Um, all right, I'm closing one eye because I'm nearsighted with one eye and farsighted with the other. So I'm just going to grab the smallest little knot that I can and pull. And then you remove that fiber. And sometimes you have a little knot that remains. You've removed the fiber, but there's a little knot. So then I like to tease the remainder of that knot until it comes out. Might have to grab it again. Let's do another one. And then I might uh, continue to do this in my mirror where I can see a little bit better. I think I got anything there. Having a very hard time seeing the knots in the camera. And the more careful you are, the better. So this is a bit painstaking, but I think the results are worth it in the end because what we're trying to achieve is to not have such a straight line of dark rooted color showing. And I'm one who I really like to show off the lace front that I paid for. You know, that's a feature that uh, certainly raises the price on a wig. And so I want to show that I prefer that look I don't really like to have that lace front covered up. I, I think it's a more natural look to have it swept away from the face just a little bit. So I'm going to work on that and then I'll be back and we'll uh, continue with the review. Okay, so I did just a little bit more plucking and uh, you could absolutely do more. But as I said, the key is not to over pluck. And I did just wanna show you one more thing. Um, I think it's very important to not just pluck from the front, but to take a comb like this, a rat tail comb, and section off just a tiny layer or a section. Pull that down and separate that. And then you can see I actually created a pretty, pretty um, thick area there of plucked fibers behind that front section because I wanted more of a transition from no hair on the forehead to suddenly a, a full head of hair. And I think that really helped 
thin out these front areas without making it too uneven. So I highly recommend that um, so that you kind of create these, this uh, gradual thickening of the fibers. Um, and it's also very important to do that right here around where the part starts. So I actually sectioned out teeny tiny pieces here and then tried to really thin this out a little bit right there. And I think that really helps. Of course, this uh, style comes in all kinds of colors and if dark rooting bothers you, I would recommend getting a lighter color. So now that we've done that and that we've got her styled away from the face with a bit of a side part, and we have that silicone tape and a little bit of powder and did some plucking, let's go ahead and look at the cap construction. So we have a center mono part, and I'm going to remove the silicone tape so that you can see that. So we have um, the center mono part and where you see the powder, that's where I've parted her. So you can absolutely do that. Um, and the further you get forward toward the front hairline, the more you can move the part. So that is the amount of space you have here with a lace front. It's a, not an extended lace front. And you have a mono part. It's a center part, like we talked about. Um, then you have a very large open wefted area here. And you have an extended nape, wonderful for coverage, very luxurious. You have these bra strap adjuster type um, adjusters, so you can adjust the circumference however you like. You have your ear tabs here, metal stays inside. And this section that is uh, around that center mono part, I don't think that's permatease, that's just um, a little closed area here on top. So overall, a lovely cap construction. Okay, she's back on my head. So let's look at some styling options for this gorgeous long style. I just love these little bends at the end and how sleek it feels and looks. Um, so you have a lot of styling options with this one, of course, with all this length. Um, one of my favorites is just tucking behind the ear. And this color is actually matching my bio hair pretty well, so I don't think I even need any root powder with that. Um, but you can see that's, that's a lovely look. You could do the other side as well. For this one, you might want to do a half tuck. It's feeling a little bit uh, dense to tuck that all behind one ear. I would do a little half tuck maybe on this side. So that's a great way just to keep the fibers out of your face. Then we have a headband we can try, of course. Let's see how that works. You can always pull the fibers down for a little more coverage if you need that. Uh, the lace front, just so you know, I'm feeling goes from here to here on me. So that's pretty good coverage. Um, and I don't feel like there are any seams or any anything that I need to obscure here at all. So looks good. Let's look at that from the sides. I like that as an easy option. And then we can do the ponytail. I always love a good ponytail. So let's see what we can accomplish. Because the density is low on this style, I think it works well for a ponytail. Even without the extended lace front, I think we can make that work here. So I'm just smoothing this back as well as I can and um, adding my bio hair underneath. A hair tie and I'm just doing a low ponytail and I'm having to go around three times and that's a pretty good sign for me that this is not too high density at all so there you go you could certainly pull down some more face framing layers but I think that is a great little ponytail here it is from all sides And then last but not least, let's do a quick little French twist with a claw clip. Oh, so luxurious to feel this kind of long hair that I certainly never accomplished with my bio hair. 
unless I was maybe when I was very young. All right, and I'm getting quite a bit of length, so you could leave that. Let's leave that out. That's kind of cute. Have that flopping around a little bit. You could tuck it under and make it more of a sleek bun. All right, I hope that looks good and that everything's blending properly. Let's take a look at that from all sides. Here she is from the right and the back and the left. As you can see, so many styling options, such a chic, elegant look. I just love it. So next, I'll want to take her outside so you can see this gorgeous color in natural light. So this again is Auburn Sugar R, and the description for that is rooted dark auburn with a medium auburn base and dark strawberry blonde highlights. So that is the description for this gorgeous color. We have just a few spots of sunlight too, so you can see it in the sunlight. But you can see those strawberry blonde highlights blended so nicely throughout. It is truly stunning. And you have the lace front. Let's take a look at that outside here in natural light again. And you have a beautiful mono part there that I've moved to the side just a little bit. Let's take a look at this stunning style from all sides. Here she is from the right and the back. Try to show you some movement. And the left. Just a gorgeous, beautiful auburn color. Okay, final thoughts. Harper by Rene of Paris in Auburn Sugar R is truly a stunning style. Uh, these beautiful, long, sleek fibers that are just a little layered to, to allow for some gorgeous movement, um, just are stunning, it worn down, and of course you have so many styling options. You can uh, you know, do an updo, you can do a ponytail, just really you can style her to your heart's content. Um, so I absolutely think this is a great summer style since you can pull her back. I also think that this auburn color is just stunning. I, I love how dynamic it is and I think anyone who enjoys brunette or auburn colors would just love this color. Now it does have the dark rooting like we talked about and so you do need to work with it a little bit to get the front hairline to look the way you want it to. And I might even do a little bit more here. But um, if dark rooting and darker knots in the front, that's just what you get when you have a dark root that doesn't have any lighter fibers in the front, you're gonna have some dark knots. Uh, if that bothers you, then I would recommend going for a lighter shade. But yeah, overall, I hope uh, that you've enjoyed this review. I hope it's been informative. And as always, I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.